and welcome to another control delete tutorial this uh, this video is going to focus mostly on setting up our animation settings from the last uh, video if you hadn't seen the previous video in the series uh, make sure to check that one out um, but what we're going to do is we're going to start and make sure that our animations are all set up properly and named properly so that we can get our animation and our animation controller set up in this video so to start uh, I'm just going to go down the line here. I have my tank backward, and I'm just going to minimize this down so we just can see the names here. So in each one of these FBX files, we're going to see the individual objects, and we're going to see their mesh, and we're going to see this file called take1, and then an avatar file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take tank backward, and... I want to make sure that in the rig settings here it's set to generic and I'm fine with it creating an avatar for each one of these that's fine um, but it's the animations tab that I want to focus on so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to name all of my animations so I'm just going to do select that again so I'm going to do tank just in case I have other objects that I'm animating I want to make sure to name my animations with whatever the object is so this will be tank backward Make sure to press enter so it saves there. It's already got the right start and end. And I'm just going to set my loop time and loop pose. So the loop pose allows us to have it um, loop seamlessly. Just in case we didn't you know, do that already. And then I'm going to hit apply. And I will end up doing this for all of the other ones. So tank. So this will be tank forward. Tank underscore forward. And I hit enter, loop, and loop, and apply. Tank idle. So make sure to hit enter, check our loops, and apply. Tank left. I almost forgot my underscore there. Tank left. Set my loops. Apply. And you can hit play down here also if you want to see that the animations are uh, in fact working. And it might be kind of hard to tell that these are going one way or another way. Um, we can always slow down the animation if we have to. Okay, and then tank right and loop both of those and apply. Okay. So now I'm going to set up an animation controller for this tank. So to do that, I can just right click, say create, and I'll go down to um, animator controller. I'm saying animation controller, sorry. So I'm just going to go ahead and just name this tank anim control. Okay, and I'm going to double click on this. That should open up the animator window. So right now we don't see anything in here. So I'm going to set up first a couple of parameters. Um, these parameters are going to be used later, but they're going to let us easily set up our controls um, using these. So my first one is going to be a floating point uh, number. And so this is going to control my horizontal direction. So I'll just name this uh, H for horizontal. And I'll create another one. This will be V. For vertical and then the last one's going to be a bool value which is a boolean and the boolean value is going to allow me to control uh, or bas basically let me know whether or not the um, whether or not the tank is in, in an idle situation so I'm just going to name this idle and by default I'm going to have this checked because when the game starts our tank should be idling so I want to make sure I have that there so now I'm going to bring in some uh, different animations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, tank idle. I'm going to drag that into my controller. And this one is going to be orange. That lets me know that this is my default. And if I double click on this, we can see all the settings that we set up before. And this just says that on start, it's going to start idling. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up some... Uh, some blendings uh, between some different animations. So I'm going to set up a blend tree. So to do that, I right click and say create state new uh, from new blend tree. 
and I'll just select this and double click it. And so I'm going to see H in here because that's the first one. And what this has done is it's created an animation uh, layer, basically. So I have my base layer, and then I have my blend tree here. Okay, so let's move end out of the way. We don't need that for now. So when I double click this, I now go into the blend tree. And I'm going to make this so I have a couple other uh, settings here. So instead of just using H. So whenever I click on this, I'm going to have my blend type. Right now it's set to 1D, one dimensional. It's just using one uh, setting. So I can have a 2D simple directional, uh, 2D freeform directional, or, or uh, 2D freeform Cartesian. Um, hopefully I'm saying that right, I have no idea. So I'm just going to do 2D simple directional for now. And my parameters, uh, I want to have two parameters here. So I want to have my horizontal, and I'll have my vertical. So I'm just going to drop this down to V, and it's going to give me both settings over here. Then I need to set up my different motions here. Um, so I'm going to add motion field four times. And when I add my second one, I start to get some uh, directional controls here. So I'll set up my four. And position X is equal to H. Position Y is equal to V. So... I have a slot here for four of my animations, and I have my four animations over here. So if I drop down, I'm going to see tank backward. So I can just drag that in, and I'm going to drag that one here. Doesn't matter what order you put them in. Um, tank forward, I'm going to drag that here. Now, if I don't want to drag them in, I can also just click here, and that'll bring up my other animation. So I'll do left. And I'll do right. So there's two different ways to do that. Okay, so horizontal controls are going to be moving um, moving me left and right. So in that case, I want both of these to be zero. I don't want... Oh, whoops. Moving things around there. I don't want um, my forward and backwards controls to have anything to do with my horizontal value in my joystick. But if I want to go forward... I want that to be 1. If I want to go backwards in my y direction, my vertical direction, I'm going to make that negative 1. So this is like my joystick. Um, so if I move this forward, I go forward. If I move this backward, I go backward. Currently, I'm not going to do anything because that's not set up. Then I have my tank left, which is going to be negative 1 and 0. So I don't want the vertical controls to do anything here. And then my tank right is going to be 1 and 0. Okay. And then if I move this red dot around, we can actually see the H and V values here changing. And they should also change the numbers that are up here, I believe. Um, or just the ones that are down there. So as I go between these, we can see how this changes. Now, I'll just reset these to 0. And zero and I don't want to have any of these currently this is selected so it's showing where these currently work okay so that's going to be my basic controls here now what I need to do is in my base layer I need to transition and tell uh, my object when to transition so what I can do is right click and say make transition and this is going to control transitioning to my blend tree and I'm going to make a transition from the blend tree back to idle. So what this allows me to do is my, uh, this one transitions forward and this one transitions backward. So I have this, these condition settings here and currently the list is empty. Um, I want to turn off has exit time. And when I do that, I'm going to get a warning that says transition needs at least um, one condition or an exit time to be valid. So what this does is it's going to allow me to have my conditions here that basically say uh, my object uh, is doing something and that's what's transitioning. Otherwise, has exit time just means when the animation's finished playing, it's either going to another animation or it's looping back to itself. Well, I don't want it to loop back to itself right now. So I'm going to create a condition. And this condi condition is going to be my Boolean, so idle. So if idling 
is, so if I'm not idling, it's going to go to one of my animations. So I need to say, is it idle? No. If it's not idle, go over here. Same idea, I'm going to set that up here. Has exit time, uncheck, add a condition, drop this down to my idle boolean, and say, yeah, if it is idling, go over here. Um, that's basically it for my animation controller. So the next part is going to be um, applying this. So what I'm going to do is the tank that I'm going to use is my tank idle, just because that's the one where it's just kind of in place, it's just kind of not doing anything. This object is already going to have an animator on it, uh, animator component, but it doesn't have the animation control or the animator controller. So you can see here it says none. So I want to drop that in, and now that is on there, and I'll be able to soon control uh, my animator. Um, apply root motion. I don't want to have that because I don't currently have root, mo root motion set up on my animations. Um, and I'm not going to for uh, this example. Um, so that's my tank idle. I'm just going to go ahead and rename this to just tank. Uh, it's still going to refer back to my original object there. Uh, I want to make sure that this object is at 0, 0, 0. And its rotation doesn't actually need to be rotated here. So I'm going to set it to 0, 0, 0 there as well. So we can see here. I have my camera, which I'm going to set at 0 and 0. And then I'm going to move it above my object. And I'm going to rotate it here in the x direction. So if I, why is it not rotating? Oh, that's my scale. Oops, sorry. In my x direction. So this is going to be pointing down 90 degrees at my tank, just so I can see my tank there. I'll just kind of move this up so I can uh, see this well. All right, and I'll set my position. Oh, that was at seven. I didn't realize I had moved that one. And let's make sure that's back to zero, or 90. All right, so this is my tank. Now, I'm actually going to do two things. I'm gonna have one script that's on my tank which causes my tank to uh, move based off of um, the animation. And then I'm going to have a tank parent object, which is actually going to drive the motion of the tank. So what I'm going to do is right click and create empty, or if you want to go to game object, create empty, both are fine. And I'm going to create an empty game object. And I'm just going to right click and reset all of its values to zeros. Uh, scale will remain at one. And I'm going to just name this tank underscore parent. So this is going to be the main tank object um, that's doing the motion. And on here, I'm going to tag this as player for now. In case I want to use this for anything later, I want to make sure that it's already tagged. Um, that way, if I have any code where I'm looking for the player, this is the player object. Okay, so my tank is going to get parented to my tank parent. Okay, so I have tank parent underneath there. So I just did that by dragging it. Uh, so I have my animator, and all of this is set up. So if I hit play, we should see that the tank idles. And there it goes. Now if I hit any of my controls, nothing happens. Uh, because I haven't set anything else up in here. The last thing I want to do is I want to create collision, and I want to make this parent a rigid body. So to do that... I'm going to add component, and I'm going to go down to physics, and I'm going to use a box collider. And I'm going to highlight over this and just press F to zoom in on it. So if you saw in my demo, I kind of gave myself a little bit of room so that my tires were not uh, always catching things. So my tires kind of go into um, some of the other game objects. So I'm just going to currently leave those the way they are. Um, and my box here... Um, I'm going to just change its size just ever so slightly. So again, I'm giving myself a little bit of room so that I'm not always kind of bumping things. So I'll just do 1.25 and 1.25. Um, that should cover like my front and back. But you can see here, my object is not on the ground properly. So 
Uh, I'll change my size here. Let's say to 0.5. And I'm going to move it up in the Y, 0.25, which should, if everything's done right, set this perfectly on the ground. Uh, since I've set my size here to 0.5, this is half of that, so it's moved it up um, so that it's now on the ground. So that'll uh, basically take care of the collision uh, of my main object. And then I need a rigid body. So under physics again, and rigid body. And I'm going to have some constraints here. So I only want this tank to rotate along the Y direction. I don't want it to... I don't want it to have it, you know, rotating this way, and I don't want to have it rotating this way, not with my current controls. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to freeze, so under constraints here, I'm going to freeze rotation for X and Z. That way this tank doesn't rotate any way I don't want it to. Um, I do want it to use gravity. It is not kinematic, so it's, uh, it is using animation, but it it's using the physics engine, which is what I want. Um, and everything else I'm just kind of going to leave um, here for now, uh, which will be fine. So that is the basic setup of our player. Um, if I hit play right now, this object is going to fall. So while I'm at it, I'm just going to create a 3D object. And we'll make this a plane. And I'll set this plane to be pretty big. So I'm just going to do 50 by 50 by 50, which will make it huge. You can see there, that's actually overkill. Let's just go 10 by 10. Okay. And we'll just name this ground. Okay, so I'll go back to my tank. And I'm not going to maximize this time, but I just want to show you that the object will now fall down to here. Yeah, so when it starts out, it's going to fall and land on the ground. Um, I don't need to put it that high above. I'll probably just set it at 0.1, which is still overkill for how high it is. There we go. So that's going to do it for this portion of the tutorial. Um, in the next portion of the video, we're going to be doing our scripting for our animation controls. So please check out that video to continue doing this tutorial. Um, thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know what else you would like to see, and uh, I'll try to get that stuff done for you. So again, thanks for watching.